everyone and welcome back to Rangibi's channel. Hey, it's been a while. Oh. Anyway, here we are and we are with a game which is called Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Now before anything else, this was given me uh, with a free key maybe a month and a bit ago and uh, yeah, I haven't made a video until now because shortly after I was given the access to, to this game um, a new alpha release was announced and I decided, well, Let's wait at the, until the new alpha is released before I made a video. The problem is that the alpha was released, well, early this week. <coughs> I mean, more than three weeks later. So, yeah, well, now I'm making the video. Anyway, what is this game? Well, if you know about the game called Rule the Waves, it's essentially the same idea, but with 3D model ships, 3D model battles. Uh, Rule the Waves is a game where you are the commander of a fleet, and you decide what you design, what you build, how much of it you do you build, all within a given budget, of course. You are given some political choices now and then, you get into wars, you fight wars with the ships you design them. Now, this is intended to be the same. Uh, of course, it's in alpha. It's in very, very early development still. There are a lot of things that aren't there yet, there are a lot of things that are mostly placeholders, to be honest. Um, <clears throat> what is here is a framework. What is here is uh, what they are going to build on. You can see the campaign, for instance, is not even available, obviously, because it's very early access. Not, it's not really early access, it's early testing, to be honest. Anyway, what is here is hugely promising. And uh, yeah, I mean, rule the waves with this kind of mm, graphics and um, yeah, 3D models and ships fighting and fighting and explosions, all those kind of stuff. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> I mean, rule the waves and rule the waves two are two games where I I really spent a lot of hours playing. I never made any game video out of them because, again, the battles were top-down views of maps. Um, you didn't really see the ships fighting, you saw the silhouettes, right? It's not the same. I never thought it would make for something very exciting to see on on videos. Maybe for streaming, yes, but back then I wasn't streaming. Right now it's in the plans, by the way, and for the new year it's in the plans uh, to stream this game and maybe some other things. But really, for YouTube, it didn't make a lot of sense, right? At least it, it didn't for me. So I never made an, uh, any video out, out of those games. But they were amazing. And this looks extremely promising. And if it reaches the level of Rule the Waves, it's going to be something I'm going to play a lot. Anyway, let's go in. What's in the game? We have spoken about many things that are or not. Well, right now, obviously, campaign is not. There's a naval academy, which are scenarios. Really, these are not scenarios in order that are here in order for you to win or lose. And I, I see the design intention behind these scenarios as learning tools. I mean, there's a lot of misinformation out there uh, about uh, warships, and that's because World of Warships, which is an arcade game, which is perfectly fine. It doesn't intend to be realistic, and it doesn't even bother with trying to be realistic at all. And I mean it at all with big capital letters. Yet people who have played that game somehow get the wrong idea of how things really were. And this is a game where, again, is immersive combat of um, naval warships going on and going off against each other. So there are things that have a place here, there are things that don't. And this teaches you that, I mean, there are things that work in real life and things that didn't work. For instance, there's here, see, this is scenario, Balsis versus torpedo boats, where here you have to design a Balsip, and there are four torpedo boats that are going to come for your neck. Historically, Balsips were really, really vulnerable to torpedo ships, to small, fast combatants. And in order to protect your battleship against it, you needed a strong secondary battery, enough maneuverability to avoid torpedoes, etc. 
Well, this scenario teaches you how to design a warship that is good enough to defend itself against a torpedo boat charge. But on the other designer um, scenario here, you have the opposite. You have to design the torpedo boats that are going to go against the battleship, right? So it teaches you what works in a torpedo boat and what doesn't. How do you design a torpedo boat that is going to go against a battleship? Does it need more guns, less guns? How much speed does it need, etc.? And the same with all of them. I mean, there are some that are more challenging, some more, uh, and that are less challenging. The idea is that after doing this, you will get a very good idea first of how to design a warship properly, and second of how design evolved through the eras, because of course it wasn't the same. A pre-dreadnought didn't fight like a proper dreadnought. I mean, ranges increased a lot, and armor layers changed a lot, and uh, weapons changed a lot. So yeah, there's there's all that. Uh, there's also a custom battle. In here, you choose your date of engagement, you choose the starting range of the engagement, you choose the compositions of the fleets that are going to engage each other, you go, you design your ships and uh, go at it. Um, what I'm going to do in this video, well, I'm going to give you a general idea of uh, what the designer looks like. Uh, we are going to design a ship and in following videos we will see that warship fighting. For that purpose, I have chosen where it is, where it is, where it is. Um, there, battle cruiser versus dreadnought. Now, this scenario uh, says that we need to build a battleship with this amount of funds. Again, is teaching you the idea that you need to limit your sizes, your funds, your costs, because in the campaign they are going to matter, and you are going against an enemy battleship. So right now we know that we need a battle cruiser and that the enemy is going to be a battleship. Not some lowly cruisers, no, a proper battleship. And we are going to design our ship accordingly. Do we want to go with a very fast but completely vulnerable mm, cruiser like the ones that blew up in Jutland? No, we don't. So we are going to need to ensure that our ship is properly protected. Still, we need to give it proper speed, we need it to give it proper weapons if we are going to destroy a proper full-fledged battleship. In order to do this, we have four different bonuses. Each one of the scenario comes with a choice of bonuses. Now, in here you can choose more funds, you get to get a more expensive ship, but you don't get access to the technologies that the other tabs give you. There's one for firepower, there's one for survivability and maneuverability, there's one for mixer technologies, a little bit of both. I'm going to go with this because, again, there's no right or wrong. You can design the ships you want however you want. I have gone through several of these scenarios designing completely ridiculous ships for the scenario itself to see how it fared. Most of the times it didn't fare very well because it's what is expected. If your design is not properly designed, if your ship is not properly designed for a given engagement, it's not going to do very well in that, right? In this one, we go versus a battleship, we are going to go with mixed technologies, because I think it's the better one. Let's start. And here we are. This is the designer. Now, we are given just one hull to choose from. Um, in, in custom battles, you can choose between a lot of them, etc. Um, there are not a lot, but again, very early uh, development um, for this game. Uh, there will be a lot more, there will be more choices, etc. I'm hoping there will also be a little bit dynamic. Uh, is what I expect, I, or, or what I hope is not exactly what they are promising, but whatever. The thing is, you are given a hull, and here we have different tabs, characteristics, components, armor, and plan. The plan is pretty much what your ship looks like, all right? Well, <coughs> so to begin with, which is all this? Well, first of all, the name Akaishi, I don't like it, so I'm going to change it and name it Congo, just because. I mean, this is going to be a Japanese ship, it seems, so Congo feels nice, okay? 
Next, displacement. Well, you can go for lesser displacement, higher displacement. What's the change? Well, first, costs go up a lot if you make a bigger ship. But you can also pack more stuff. So, balancing act. Do I want to put more stuff? Do I want to put less stuff? Less stuff. Also, depending on your displacement, you can see that the hull can be a little bit longer, a little bit smaller. This matters, because if your ship is bigger, it's easier to hit. So yeah, I'm going to put it at 21,000 tons, completely random, out of the blue. Um, later on, we will toggle with this, because this is going to be a balance act. Uh, weight and cost, probably we are going to run over cost and over weight at uh, some point, and we are going to need to fiddle with the design to make it viable. Second, speed, 34 knots. Oh, well, that's quite a lot, right? Do we need th 34 knots? Well, it's a battle cruiser, it needs to be fast, but it's a 21,000 one, ton one. That's a lot. I'm going to go with 30, call it a day. Also, we are going against a battle ship, which is going to be pretty slow, because it's a battle ship. So, yeah, 30 knots should be enough. Range. By the way, you can see that each one of these pop-ups have um, pluses and minuses. I'm not going to enter into that. You can pause the video at any time and look at it, uh, look at the descriptions, etc. Right? Uh, range. Well, this is important for campaign. For campaign, if your ship has very low range, it's going to be very limited, right? Um, but if you want long range, it's going to cost you weight and cost. You can see that as I go up with the slider, it takes more cost, it takes more weight. Uh, for these scenarios, which, is, which are right that scenarios, it's very easy to go, ah, ah range very short, whatever, I save weight and cost. The problem is I didn't do that. Because if I'm going to build a ship like this in the campaign, I want it to have some range. What's the purpose and the point of a battle ship that can go, can't go beyond the port? So range, medium. Again, this is how I do things, because I want to train myself by the time the campaign is available. Next in line, bullheads. This is how many compartments, internal compartments, your ship has, the subdivision inside. The more, the more survivable, the less, the less survivable. I'm going to go with many, because we are going against a battle ship, so we are going to probably take some hits, and I don't want one hit to ruin my ship, right? Again. For destroyers, maybe you want more, less, cruisers, more, less, depending on what you are expecting and the resistance to damage your ships will have. Of course, again, if you put few or minimum, it costs a lot less and you save a lot of weight. But, yeah, protection comes at a cost, right? Next, components. We begin with propulsion. Here we have different kinds of propulsions. We have unlocked up to gear steam turbines. There are then more advanced one, diesels, uh, triple expansions, whatever. Uh, well, uh, these uh, save you weight in exchange for more cost. Also, they are more efficient. You can see you have bonuses for acceleration, um, etc. So let's go with that. What fuel do we use? Coal, semi oil. This mix means a mix of coal and oil, or just oil. Well, again, this saves weight, but increases the cost. Right now, I'm bothering because the weight, I want to it to be lower than this. Cost, right now, I have a lot. Space for weight, not, not so much. Next, uh, bo um, boilers and the air feed into them. You can go with natural convection, which isn't really that good, because you can see it's very inefficient, but it doesn't cost you anything. You can go with inducer um, draft boilers, you can go with forcer, which these are essentially fans which are forcing air into the boilers, or a balanced approach. These two, right now, we don't have the, the tech, so inducer. Yeah, generally speaking, natural, you don't want to go with. This costs a little bit, but it's much more efficient. Mostly because if you go with natural, you're going to need a lot, a lot more funnels, and funnels also weight and cost. Next, auxiliary engines. Well, we have the choice between a petrol engine or nothing else. Um, yeah, this is the extra machinery that's in your hull, other than the main machinery, uh, which is going to help you with auxiliary, auxiliary power generators, electricity, assisting the, the turn of the turrets, all that kind of stuff. 
So we go with this. This is probably something you don't need for a very small torpedo boat, but for a big battleship like this, yes, you need it. Then you have, in technologies we don't have yet, we have the auxiliary diesel engine and the turbo electric drive. This, this makes me smile, smile a little bit because turbo electric drive was more complex than this. But again, this is very early. A lot of things also have to be a little bit abstracted in a game like this because otherwise it's going to be very complicated and the development team is not that big. So yeah, well, whatever, at any rate, we are going to go into more detailed discussions about that in, fu in future videos. Right now, this will do. Protection, well, safest plan at all, right? First, what kind of plates are we using? We can go from iron plate, <coughs> yeah, no, not really or up to crop four once we have it unlocked. We only have group three. Essentially, in here, you don't want to skip costs. Um, the better armor you get, the more it costs, but it weighs less and protects more. So, I mean, it's a no-brainer. We go with the best one. Next, barbettes, the thickness. This protects you from yeah, blowing up. I mean, it's what happened at Jutland, at least to two of the battle cruisers. Uh, the barbettes got penetrated, projectile exploded inside, explosion got into the magazines, boom. So by giving proper thicknesses to the barbet, you reduce the chance that that's, that happens. We are going against a battleship. We are going to go with heavy. If we were going against like cruiser, or if I was mm, designing just a light cruiser destroyer, with one would be enough. But again, we are going against a ship, so thick enough. By the way, this is not just the barbet. I mean, a barbet, you know what is? It's that, right? On top of here, you go and place some guns, and that's the barbet, right? Right, but wrong, because this one also has a barbet. See, down there, there is a turning table, and under that, in the hull, there's going to be also a barbette, which is going to go into the magazines, which are very low in the hull. So this protects all the guns, not just the ones that have this, right? So remember that, because yeah, if you think that, oh, I didn't put any of these instructors, I don't need this, no, you do need that. Next, anti-torpedo. Uh, back to the same thing as the range. Uh, Anti-torpedo protection gives you protection against flooding and torpedo hits. Uh, we are going against a battle ship, so um, yeah, we are not going to be torpedoed, right? Well, yes, but if I'm going to ever design a warship like this in the campaign, I want some anti-torpedo protection. Because I don't want to be a big spending for my navy, which is going to be a big ship like this, a costly ship like this, to have absolutely no protection. In this scenario, I don't need it, but common sense says I need it, so I'm going to put it in. Again, this is how I do things. You don't need to do, do like I do. Uh, bottom, single bottom, double bottom, triple bottom. Well, same idea. We don't need it because this is against torpedoes and mines and that kind of thing, underwater explosions. Uh, we are not going to have many of those in this scenario, but I don't care. I'm going to go with a double because I would go, yes, common sense, with one for my warships in the campaign. Uh, triple bottom really <laughs> is super advanced. I don't know. Well, again, these are all decks that you are going to have to um, research during the campaign. So, yeah. Next, bullheads. Well, we have bullheads here. These are how many of those are. This, uh, this is how much subdivision the hull has. This is how strong the walls, the watertight uh, separations of those walls are. So yeah, again, we are going to go with as high as possible because in, yeah, that's essentially protection. It's protection against flooding, it's protection against fire, and also, as you can see, it helps with fire extinguishing. Anti-flooding. Well, these are the equipment. This is the equipment that deals with flooding, pumps, uh, that kind of stuff. And uh, I'm going to go with anti-torpedo flood. Not only again because I would do it, common sense, and it's torpedo hits, but because underwater hits are possible in this game. A hit can happen that 
hit center the water line and begins a flooding and if you don't have the proper equipment to deal with that that flooding is going to be a problem so yeah this we also want and finally citadel protection now this is super 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 abstracted and the armor model of this game is one of those things that i say are in very 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 early uh, shape um yeah this is i mean you can see here turtle map uh, armor scheme all or nothing armor scheme well these things didn't just give you some pluses and minuses there were some very specific um advantages and drawbacks for each one of them and the previous one of course and these are not yet in the game there probably will be but right now they aren't at any rate we will speak more about that in future videos right now we go with armor citadel 3 again as, ha as much protection as we can in the tonnage we can because our enemy is about it next armaments and equipment but before i go with this I usually stop and look at what I'm going to actually put on my ship because it's a little bit. Mm, I mean, it doesn't make a lot of sense choosing this without knowing exactly what I'm going to put, right? So first, let's work uh, our hood. By the way, down here you can see. Well, this is our how our hood looks right now. Later on, you will see it looks different. Uh, first thing, well, we need a main tower and a secondary tower and funnels and some weapons before our ship is viable so we begin with the main tower and here uh, i actually noticed one thing what interesting thing and this comes hand to hand with the, with uh, what i said designing warships was a matter of compromise you couldn't have it all in a limited displacement you had to sacrifice something in order to improve something else and uh, here we can see that the lowest of the advanced towers which is the level 3, I have some traits, some bonuses, that if we move up to the next iteration, you can see the weight and the cost increases, but you also get more mm, stats, right? Which is fine. If we jump from 4 to 5, you can see that the stats increase, but just by point for po 0 0.5, in aim speed, accuracy, long range, accuracy plus two. I mean, when you jump from here to here, we are jumping by almost a full point and one long range accuracy. I mean, this is for longer range accuracy maybe, but the cost is almost 300 tons and almost $200,000. I mean, I don't think it's worth going with the most expensive one. And uh, yeah, here we come with one of the most hated things about this game. <laughs> yeah, you see, we can't place this wherever we want, even while we should. If I want to put this here, I should be able to. I mean, it makes sense that I want to put it in some middle position. But why on this tree? Why can't I put it a slightly bit ba more backwards? Well, because there are only three answer points here that don't make any sense because yeah, I am the designer, I decide where everything goes, right? Well, the problem is that you can't right now. These anchor points are mostly for the AI, because the AI also designs its ships. But uh, I don't know, I, I, I think the players should be, um, shouldn't be forced to, to use them. Um, as a guideline for new players that don't know a lot about ships, well, I mean, they are okay. But if again, if I want to put this here, I should. And we will be more. We will see more of that later on. So yeah, let's place it. Secondary tower. Now the story of the sec um, primary tower is not exactly the same as the real one. I mean, you can see that if we jump from one another, the bonuses are high, and the costs don't jump a lot. I mean, really, this one is worthwhile. So we go with this one. Okay. It's shaping up. Next, funnels. Now, down here you can see engine. Engine efficiency, 0%. Why? Well, because essentially we have boilers down here, but nowhere to put air from outside into the engines, so they burn, etc. We need funnels. So we have a lot of different funnels. Each one of them has a funnel capacity. Remember the draft choices we had. 
we have a plus 75 funnel capacity. The more power we need, the more power we put in the hull, the more uh, capacity we need, right? So what we need is this engine efficiency to be, if possible, 100. If not, at least as, as high as possible. So I'm going to go with a large funnel and see if I can, I can place it here. Cool. And then I'm going to go with a lesser one and I'm going to go and we have a 100%. Why two? Well, one of them, take it away, is not enough. But even if this one was giving me 100%, I would want a second one, on principle. Why? Well, because this thing is going to go into battle. And in battles, things tend to get hit. Uh, things to get that get hit tends to be damaged. And if you get your only funnel damage in the middle of the battle, uh, yeah, and you get this down to maybe 10%. Let's say that your ship is not be moving very well, right? So yeah, against some kind of damage protection, some redundancy. Okay, this is fine. Next, barbells. Well, looking at this warship, I'm probably go with um, four gun, four turrets and eight guns. Uh, huge is for 16 inch and bigger, which I don't even know if we can mount, I don't think, no, the mm, top is 13. Uh, big is for guns more or less of this range, so yeah. See again, the freaking anchor points, why can't I put all it here and not displace it slightly back or even mess it with the front tower? I mean, not there, because otherwise the gun would be hitting back there, but slightly closer, still able to turn, but yeah, whatever. What the hell, if I want to put, <laughs> if I want to put a barbet here, I should be able to. I mean, I should. Makes no bloody sense. But if I want to, I should be, I should be allowed to. And the game doesn't allow me to do, which really, really infuriates me. Hope, hopefully these anchor point things goes away, really. Anyway, one here, and again, just one in the back. Yeah, at least it's a point that makes sense. But why not a lot back? Why can't I put just, I mean, over this piece of the structure, right? Which is free, oh, whatever. There. Okay, the main guns. Now, you can put wing guns in this in design, doesn't make sense, but wing guns also are a little bit. I'll make a video about that, and them, but whatever, certain, center nine we're going to. Well, you can see the gun, caliber, you can see also the mark. This is important because higher marks have higher accuracy, better rate of fire, much, sl I mean, they, they really fire faster. And um, they also have higher ranges, etc. So between a mark two, 13 um, inch or a mark three, 12 inch, Usually I would go for the smaller caliber with a better mark. At any rate, these are going to be too big to for this ship. You can see that our wake is increasing dangerously. So 12 for 11. Uh, we can try for 12. And if later on we have problems with weight and cost, we can downscale it. So yeah, here. Well, thankfully, the weapons you can see, they tend to go to anchor points, but if you don't want there, you can put them elsewhere. See, why can't I do this with my weapons and not with my barbets, really? Or my structures, but whatever. That's that's why I say I hope this, this changes. At any rate, two more at the back. And there. Now, of course, the placement is important. You can see that if I take this one away and I'm going to place it again so you can see you can see the um, arcs of fire see if I put it here it has a big arc of fire if I put it here it has a lot less because the structure is in the way so you can tailor your main weapons uh, yeah as long as you can <laughs> dance around this placement point but whatever yeah, you can put your weapons so they have bigger or uh, smaller arcs of fire. They matter. So, yeah, again, the designer does a good job at that. Okay, next, secondary guns. 
Well, first case mates, we don't have any other than some on the superstructure. So let's put some guns here. Again, we are going against a battle ship. These are not going to help a lot, but out of principle, I'm going to put them because I would put them too in any design I build. By the way, auto mirror, since I didn't have it enabled, now I do. Okay, no more places for small guns. So. Secondary battery, what do we want to go for? Well, six inch guns, you can see they are a lot, a lot heavier than five inch guns. Five inch should be enough for light forces, so whatever, let's go with them. Now you can see again the dams placement points, but you don't need to put them on the placement points. And also here I'm going to show you another nifty trick. You can put your guns like this, but they look terrible, right? So what you do when you put them is with R and T, you rotate them. So I can put one here. The problem is that the mirror version won't do this, but we will deal with that later. One here, which is going to be pointed forwards, and maybe one back here, pointed backwards. This will give us 12 secondary guns, six per side, which is pretty good for a ship this size. Now, how would do we deal with these ones here? Well, we choose them and rotate them on our own, like this. And finally, this one, uh, and this looks a lot better than if they were pointing outwards. Now, we don't have anything to put here in the middle. I would like some kind of structure, some a boat deck or something like that. Well, we have more than enough boats here, but something in the middle to kind of link these two. Again, this is in very early stages, so right now there isn't. Also, you can see that you can set cross decks. See, these guns, they do have link, um, Arcs of fire to the opposite side. You can set wing uh, to reds for crossfire. It's very complicated. I will make videos about that. Uh, but in this one, we didn't. We don't need them. Next, torpedo launchers. Do we need underwater torpedo tubes? No, no, we don't. I mean, we could. We could put up to six, one in the rear, one in the front, and two in the sides. But really, for ships this size, I, I know they were used historically. Historically, they were useless, so yeah, I don't bother with them. You can, but I don't. So, okay, we do have our guns in place. Uh, this looks like a lot more complete, right? So next in line, components, armament, cells. We have light, standard, heavy, super heavy, we don't have yet. I'm going to go with heavy. We are going against a battleship. This increases the penetration, increases the range a little bit, increases the damage makes the cell weight more, makes the velocity of the muscle go a little bit slower, and uh, increases the ammo detonation strength, whatever. I mean, if we get pen into the magazines, we are going to blow up anyway, so who cares? Uh, there, how many rounds we want? Normal load, reduced load, or increased load. <coughs> Nominal is 100, per, 100 rounds per gun which is plenty for a single scenario, and it's plenty for most of the campaign work. Uh, if you want to go with some very long range commerce raider or something like that, that is going to be away from port for very long periods of time, going for increases makes sense. But for this, um, no, no, not really. It could be useful, but nah. Next, what kind of propellant we use? We go from black powder, which obviously, hell no, up to high TNT. This is the explosive content of the of the cells. Uh, right now we only have access up to leadite, but you can see that leadite is both unstable and it's only really good for high explosive um, rounds. So this for maybe a light cruiser with uh, six inch guns, which are going to be firing high explosive most of the time, this would be great. But I'm going to go with ballistite, which out of the two we have that are good for anti anti-armor work, this one is the best one, I think. By the way, I'm going to go through each one of them, so you can 
read the description, see the modifiers, you can pause at any moment to read the descriptions. Again, this is going to be long enough, I'm not going to go into that, in this video at least. Next, the reds. Well, a fast train is never bad, but this costs a lot in weight. And we are not even done with the armor yet. We haven't begin, begin with the armor yet. So I can't do without better training for the time being. Why? Why? Because, well, most of the time we are going to be engaging at long enough ranges. Also, these turrets are not very big, they don't train very slowly. If these were huge, huge 18 inch guns, yeah, probably I would need something of this, like this. But for this, nah. Next. Uh, yeah, reload. Reload, you always go with the best one. No questions. Why? Well, because rate of fire matters a lot. The faster you fire, the more mm, cells you put down range, and the faster you can deal with enemies. So, yeah, always the higher we can. And, yeah, we also have um, different sizes of torpedoes. If we were using torpedoes, we also can increase or decrease the amount of torpedoes we carry, and we can give it different kind of propulsions. We are not dealing with torpedoes in this ship, so whatever. Next, equipment, range finders. Later on, you also have radio here, radar, and acoustics for um, destroyers and um, probably light cruisers. Um, anyway, right now, we this is the range finder, okay? So we can so go with none, which is not a huge hugely good idea and we can go with different generations of um, directors each one of them is different so you can see this is a coincidence range finder this one is a range a stereoscopic range finder which is the difference this one finds the range much faster plus 50 percent gun aiming speed this is really good for vessels that are expected to fight at close ranges for instance it also has a 2% gun base accuracy. This one has a lower gun uh, aiming speed increase, 15% versus 7%. It doesn't have a 2% gun base accuracy, but it has a plus 10% gun long range accuracy. So this is for long engagement, long range. This is for shorter ranges. This is a Warship, which is going to be fighting mostly at the higher range it can, so this one is the one we want. You can see we already are over cost. Yeah, this is going to be fun. Um, next, armor. Well, yeah, as I said, armor is one of the things that needed work. Belt. The belt is, uh, yeah, you see this line here. Well, this is where the belt is. This is uh, how much it extends in a real warship of the time. It covered a little bit above the waterline, a little bit under it, but only that. Not in the game, not right now. The number you put here is what the ship receives from here to is a whole hull, which obviously is wrong, uh, but again, the armor model currently is a placeholder, probably, and is very simplificated. So, it is what it is, for now. Hopefully, uh, and I really, I think they are going to, uh, it's not even a doubt, uh, they are going to rehash it to make it realistic. This is not. But we are going to armor it, anyway. So, how do I armor ship? Well, this is how I armor ships, okay? This is how I deal with this particular task. There are very different ways to do it, but this is the trend and uh, doctrine I follow. First of all, I take a note at my guns. You can see, penetration mm, values there. The problem is that those penetration values are not against the armor we are using. They are displayed for the baseline, which is iron plate. Remember, group armor offers plus 90% armor strength. So the values you see here are for iron plate, right? So actually, if I add here, for instance, 10, I 10 inches, oh, come on, 10 inches of belt, and you can see here we have an armor quality plus 98%. I don't exactly know why 98, probably 
Yeah, the barbet probably, and some other sources we have taken up there. But these 10 inches of belt actually offer the equivalent of 19.8 inches of armor. So if we look here, we are protected on that belt against fire from these guns at ranges of 7,500 meters, which is pretty good. 5,500 meters is very short range. So this is more than good enough, even while here it says that these guns penetrate 10 inches at 20,000 meters. Not the case, not the case. Also, there are other considerations in armor, but I'm not going to go into them right now. Uh, and again, we have just given 10 inches of armor plate from the waterline up to here. Not right. I mean, this is going to change. There's no doubt uh, about it, but whatever. Next, well, if I think 10 inches of armor is enough, which I do, for, I mean, a balanced design, again, this was doctrine of the time, and this is the rationale I use for armor in, armor in my ships. A balanced design between guns and armor is a ship that is well armored enough to protect itself against his own guns, okay? So I'm going to give it a decent range of protection against my own guns. Of course, then, if an enemy comes with 16-inch guns, well, I'm going to be pretty much fucked. <laughs> but that's that's how you usually did things in back in the day. Made sense back then, makes sense in here. So 10 inches on the belt. Well, I'm going to give the same to the conning tower, which again, I'm armoring this whole place with 10 inches of armor, every all part of it. The, 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 the conning tower is actually this thing here with the slit. You see it, right? There. Yeah, that should be the only place armor with 10 inches of uh, armor, but whatever. Again, the armor model is very, very early and is very simplified. It will change. I'm sure of that. Next, two red faces. Here I usually go with the same that I go from, for the belt, plus a little bit. Just in case. Because I don't want my turrets to be knocked out. As easy as that. Uh, next in line, we can see that uh, our gun penetrates up to 5 inches, to well, 5.1 inches at 20,000 meters, which is the longest range it has. Well, to protect against that with a plus 100%, mm, essentially, well, I'm going to go, actually, I'm not going to fully cover them against 20,000 meters, but 2.5 should be, yeah, more or less enough. And next in line, I do the same with the turret. At least equal protection. Because really, it doesn't make me any good if my hull can't be pe penetrated, but my turrets are all gone, right? So same in scale of armor. Again, that's how I armor my ships. Doesn't need, you, do to do, you need to do the same yourself. Next, belt extended. Well, this is the extension of the armor beyond the citadel. So bow and stand areas. Same problem here as with here. So right now, this here that should be, I mean, the, the, the standard that should be down to the waterline, but whatever. Yeah, we talked about that. I usually go with roughly 30% of what's on the main belt. This usually is intended to protect, uh, protect against uh, smaller guns, not really main guns. You could go and armor your ship with uh, the same degree of uh, armor, but yeah, I mean, the cost and weight is not go it's going to be prohibitive. So, yeah. Uh, secondaries, I don't really care. Splinter armor is more than good enough for them. And deck extender, I usually go with half of the main deck. And we ended with as if we can't beat. <laughs> I told you, I told you we were going to go beyond weight and cost. So how do we do this? How do we do this a viable ship? Well, the weight we could make a bigger ship, but even then it's not enough because when you increase the size of the hull, you also have to invest part of that extra displacement into structural beams, reinforcements. The hull is going to be bigger. It needs part of that tonnage for the hull itself. Of course, it doesn't scale on the same way. I mean, it doesn't take if I increase it about 100 tons, it doesn't scale 100 tons extra for the hull. It gives some space, but it's not exactly the most efficient way. 
Well, we can decrease the speed, which also will decrease the cost because the machinery is pretty expensive. Do we need 30 knots? Well, for a ship, 21,000 tons, not really. Not really. I mean, ships of the time, Invincible, by the way, was what? 19,000 tons, 19,000 tons, and ran at 27 knots. I mean, their flinger was a 30,000 toner, uh, was good for 27 and a half, 28. So I'm going to go down to 28. Yeah. Well, we saved quite a little bit of cash. I mean, look at that. We were at 14% over budget, and now we are at only 7%. Good. Well, uh, weight is still a lot over wood yet. Um, we can go with. Oh, look at that. Hmm. Yeah, actually, this can work. I mean, it makes us a little bit more vulnerable, but still, we are still a battle cruiser, right? That's the uh, trade off speed for a little bit of firepower, a little bit of armor, who knows? Uh, okay, I'm okay with that. Where do we save more? We need to save cost. I'm not going to downgrade my, my armor. There's no question about that. Maybe cheaper. Nah, not enough cost save. Only 2000k. The 200,000k. No. Well, we could scale back the turbines, maybe. Yeah, I mean, it's a big jumping cost. I mean, it's a 150% engine cost change between both. It's a little bit less effective. But yeah, we are very close. Look at that. Ooh, hoo, hoo. So if we find another way to reduce costs, we will be there. Where should that go? Maybe if I reduce the extended deck a little bit and um, maybe that. Okay, this works. What else can we do to reduce the costs? Mm -hmm. No, this won't save us a lot if we go with a smaller one. But this one. Mm -hmm. Let me try it. Uno, another million one for here. We still have 100% and we save some cost. Good. What else? What else? What else? Okay, maybe a couple of these guys can go. Good. Not that it is save a lot, but it's a little bit. Oh, decreasing, decreasing maybe one point of both we are coming close and now that we have some weight to spare we can decrease this look at that we did it yeah i reduced a little bit of the displacement because as you can see i was 100 less tons and as you can see when i reduced 100 you can see some weight I actually save more weight. Why? Because part of the structural beams and reinforcements, etc., went two steps, and now I'm perfectly, almost perfectly, squarely, 100%, 100%. I nailed it. Now there are other things going on here. You can see aft weight offset. What is it? Well, this means that also this is a very well balanced ship. I'm pretty proud of myself. Um, <laughs> yeah, th this means that there is so much weight in the rear as in the front. If you delete this, you can see at weight offset 22%. And now it's even dangerous. Even small amounts are highly undesirable. Why? Well, because that is your ship's stability. We will see more of this in a second. Um, now it's at 2%. Why? Damn it. I had it nailed down. Uh, uh, there. There. There it is. Perfect. Perfect. I nailed it again. So yeah, this is our worship, and let's look at how it looks. 
Well, you can see it's length of um, this, beam this, draft this, this is the displacement standard, normal displacement, the main battery, etc. Now, if we go and close all this, we can take a look at all the stats. First, the overview. Name, displacement, cost, build time. This is important. This is for campaign. You can see there's a maintain maintenance cost. There's a build time. So this is really not that expensive and not that considered. I mean, this is a big shipping. This is, it is expensive, but it's not ultra expensive and it's not super long to build and it's not super expensive to run. Top speed, engine power. There's a 60,000 mm, horsepower, which is pretty reasonable. Armor, crew, etc. All the general details. Next, ship details. Well, in more. Well, I'm going to go with the cursor down, and you can take a look at each one of them. Stop the video at any point if you want to look more of that. Uh, essentially, this is a summing up of all the things the ship has. Okay. Next, weights and costs your weight and cost and how it's distributed across the different things of the ship. Very useful if you, what I was doing before just by eyesighting things I could have done with this screen because it says what's the most expensive things and where you can save the most. You can, you can see the most you can save is on the hull actually making it smaller and then the armor belt and then the engines and boilers. So actually I, I, I did Nail exactly what I needed to degree, so I'm pretty proud of myself, whatever. Uh, there. And then finally, the stats. You can see main requirements are tower, secondary tower, at least two main guns, and at least one funnel. Uh, we have a lot more than that. And detection, well, all these things are important, and we again, we will talk about them in other videos, because this is going to be very long as it is. But what I was telling you before, see, pitch and roll. These two are really important. If you um, make an unbalanced design, which is fast, more heavy in the nose than in the rear or on one side or another, yeah, the, these numbers will suffer a lot. Uh, base accuracy, low range accuracy, etc. All those kind of stuff. So, yeah, that's the warship. And now we do have it here. This is Congo. And the next video we are going to send it in the mission. So I really hope you enjoyed this uh, video and uh, yeah, it's good to be back. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and uh, see you later.